Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. This is the time to look at the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. Right triangles are the ones that have a right angle in them somewhere, which we will label with a little tiny square like this. And uh, I'm just going to label this triangle ABC with capital letters. And the opposite sides from each of these uh, big angles I'm going to label with the lowercase versions, little a, little b, and little c. And the Pythagorean theorem says that if you set it up this way, uh, the hypotenuse side, the longest side, which is opposite the 90 degree angle, if you square its length, you get the sum of the squares of the other two sides, or a squared here, oops, plus b squared over here. So you square this side, and you square this side, and you square this side, and you have this relationship between those three squares. Uh, so for example, let's say uh, this side down here was 12, and let's say this side up here was 5. Then to find out what c is, I do c squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. c squared is equal to, that's 144 plus 25. c squared is equal to, adding that up, 169. Okay, now if I take the square root of both sides, I get that c is equal to, I'm going to write it like this to begin with, plus or minus the square root of this is 13. Uh, but we know that c has to be a positive number, so c is equal to positive 13. Uh, and so generally, we, we kind of leave this step out here, the plus or minus bit, because we know we want a positive number. Uh, and so from this step, you could just, uh, uh, most people will be happy if you just say that c equals 13. Uh, I certainly would be in all but the most extreme circumstances. Uh, okay, so that one works out really nicely, and this is a, a, one of the uh, easy triangles that you might re actually memorize, the 5, 12, 13 triangle. There's also a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's really popular among the kids these days. Um, so here's another one. This one is an isosceles triangle because it has two sides that are the same length, here and here. And let's call this one uh, L, M, N, just to show you that we, we don't have to use these same letters and then we need to be really careful about what we call things. So let's say then we'll label this side little m and uh, these sides here I'm not going to give a letter, I'm just going to label them with their length, which is 3. So in this case, well, maybe I'll give them a, a label. This side is L, I'm going to use a scripty looking cursive L to be super clear, and this side is N. So the relationship is that this long side, the hypotenuse, its length squared is equal to the squares of the other two sides, is uh, N squared plus L squared. Once again, I use that cursive L so it doesn't look like a 1 m squared is equal to uh, 3 squared here plus another 3 squared right there. That means m squared is equal to 9 plus 9 or m squared is equal to 18. And that means then that m is equal to the square root of 18, which isn't a super nice number, uh, but you could rewrite it as root 9 times root 2 because we know what root 9 is. Root 9 is 3. So we have 3 root 2 is a little bit nicer way to write that as a, as a mixed radical. Okay, so we've used that to find the hypotenuse twice. What about finding a side that is not the hypotenuse? So we will just make anything up here. Um, we'll do something like this and we'll give it some lengths. I don't know, let's try, um, this side is going to be 15, that's the hypotenuse, and then maybe uh, we'll call this side 11, and let's see what this other side is going to become. Um, so let's call this A, B, and I'll use C again, and so this side is little b. What's my relationship going to be? Well, I'm going to write this in a couple of different ways. We know that C squared, which is this side, this side is A, c squared is a squared plus b squared. Um, so we can fill in all the values and, and solve this right here. So 15 squared is 11 squared plus b squared. That means 2 
25 is 121 plus b squared. Rearranging that, I'm going to get uh, b squared is 104. Yes, okay, and then b is the square root of 104. Uh, let's see, that's uh, 26 times 4, so that's 2 root 26, I think is the simplest way to write that. And you can convert that to some decimal if you like. The other way to do this is to um, b squared, if I rearrange this right away at the beginning, is equal to the square of the long side minus the square of the other short side. b squared is, uh, when you do all this out, 225 minus 121. So b squared is 104, and b is the square root of 104. So you can you can just start with this the basic version of this, or if you want, you can sort of memorize or or realize the other version of this. Uh, a short side is the long side minus the other short side, uh, the squares of all of those things. So that's the Pythagorean theorem, and really important thing, um, only, only. So I look at, so seriously. I only put I put two l's in my only, only for right triangles. If you try to do this with something that's not a right triangle, you're going to get a wrong answer. That's not how it works. We have a different law for that. So only use this for right triangles. That's all the Pythagorean theorem is good for. I hope that helps, and let me know if you have any questions.